You were looking for rings in, in Dubai. Dubai. <laughs> oh no, no. Okay, wait. No, in Dubai, I skipped. I skipped a whole lot. We looked at rings. This was him. Um, he had came home okay. from Dubai. From Dubai. Oh, so right. we looked at. Right. Right. I was if, say, I, right. if I knew Dubai, then, what I know now. Right. plus years at some point you realize you were married into crazy and that's what our podcast is all about we offer love laughter and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage so sit back relax and get your ear hustle on it's time to start the conversation all right let's go welcome to episode 89 of married into crazy with snooks and lovey i'm lovey i'm snooks and we want to welcome everyone back. Um, we're having a phenomenal time talking to these different couples all over the U.S. and doing our COVID couple series. Yeah, it's been really good. We've been getting great feedback. It's, you know, you learn a lot, too. I feel like I have anyway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Whether you know them or not. Some right, of these right. people we've known a long time. Others we've known just for a couple of years. Um, but it's one of those things where we've really met. We didn't realize we knew some interesting people. Yeah. Well, I mean... You know, when you hear someone's story, you hear all the the details. Like when people don't know that you, you got stabbed, they're like, I never knew that. Or I knew of it, but I don't know what really happened. And, you know, so the more you talk, the more you know. Exactly. And, and it's That's nice. a commercial. The more you talk, the more you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's a lot of fun because, again, there's nuggets in every single one of these episodes. And I hope that. For any of our new listeners, please go back and listen to as the, the series as well as the rest of the podcast. Yeah, I'm all, uh, not just that, that one. <laughs> listen to all the. But look, one thing we want to ask everybody to do is make sure that you take an opportunity to go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review and a rating. And she always says, put five on it. Put five on it. See, obviously she gets to sing, but I can't for no, some No, I reason. was actually not trying to sing, but... Because I was like trying to come in and I got five on it, but I don't got five. Whatever. I want them to have five. So please go over to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating. And please. Let us know what your thoughts are and, and reach out to us at coaching at marriedintocrazy.com or snooksandlevy at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. That, that was almost rehearsed. <laughs> so yeah, please do that. You know, stay in the conversation. Let us know what you like to hear. There's a lot more coming up. We have more series of interviews mm-hmm. um, coming up. We also have a lot of topics that we want to discuss that have been um, that people have been bringing to our attention and that we've been experiencing as well. A lot mm-hmm. has happened in the last five weeks. <laughs> it's, it's especially been like a, five weeks, hasn't it? This is this is week number five for oh for the COVID COVID. This is Not our last installment yeah. of the COVID couple mm-hmm. series. Last installment after this. I'm watching Netflix. I'm going to watch The Last Dance. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the MJ series. I want to see that. Um, anything you want to see, see in particular? Um, on Netflix, oh, the Madam C.J. Walker. Oh, yeah, I want to see that too. Self-made. I think that's what it's called. So when you're doing a podcast and the coaching and there's so many different things that's been going on, we, we've been blessed. This has been a, definitely a trying time. Family has come together and it, it's just... It's been great mm-hmm. from the respect of really getting back to basics and understanding what's truly essential. I know we overplay that word essential versus non-essential, and we talked about it in the past, but you really do learn what is essential in your life. Well, I, you know, and in, in, in like you said, we, we, we've been tossing that word essential out. Everyone is essential in some way, shape, or form. It's, I just feel like it's kind of finding out what your true essentialism is. <laughs> You know, yeah. So it's a good book too. It sure is because I bought it for you. That you did. That's yes, true. You yes, did I did. It. I did. I did. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the interview. Let's get into it. <laughs> so this week, for the very last installment of the COVID Couple series, we have Aaron and Kara Haynes. Yes. So they're out of Sacramento. They're going to tell their story. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. But make sure you listen because it's a very interesting couple. They have a very unique story. And it's also, it, it ties kind of back, part part of it ties back to what we talk about in the beginning of our series, you know, someone very intricate. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm not going to say anything because it's going to come out in the story. So have a great time. If you have any feedback, <laughs> feel free to let us know. And we look forward to listening with you. Here we go. All right. Bye-bye. 
Okay, we want to welcome everybody to the Married into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Levy. I'm Levy. I'm Snooks. And today we're continuing the tradition. We actually have the last couple that's going to be part of our COVID couple series. Um, and so today we have Aaron and Kara Haynes. How are you two doing? Hey, good. Thanks for having it's us. Okay, you can say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nice. So, as you know, um, I think you guys have listened to it. Kara and I spoke with you. Uh, we're yeah. talking to couples all over the U.S. Um, there's been five select ones that we've chosen. Um, and what we're doing is truly focusing on the story behind the couple. How you guys started, what your background is as far as coming together. We're going to ask you a series of questions, but we're also going to want to know, how is this whole coronavirus quarantine, I think it's day 9,022, uh, at least that's what it feels like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we want to get, you know, how's that affecting the two of you? And how, how's it impacted jobs, life, love, kids, all of that? So as we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, so I'm Kara, and we have been together for, I think, what is it, this year is 19 years, but married for eight years. Eight years? Eight years. And um, met in college, went through college, growing up together, and uh, here we are. We, we still hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that in itself is a testimony. Yes. Yeah. So 19 years. Where, where'd you guys meet? What, what did you Dang, Myself? Yo. <laughs> I'm trying to let you get in there. You just want to move on. I appreciate, I appreciate that, cousin. Uh, and I'm Aaron uh, from Fresno, California. Met Kara in junior college. Uh, went went off to, uh, I got a scholarship, went off to college in Boise, uh, Boise State. Uh, we stayed together, did the whole long distance thing. Came back, graduated college, came back. We stayed together and been playing overseas ever since professionally and of course we stayed together and now we married happily married and the corona haven't torn us away apart. <laughs> I, I think it's funny every few sentences he's like we stay together we stay together nah, <laughs> hey, stay together. Look, I, hey I, had, I gotta put emphasis on that because i hear so many people like Long distance relationships are impossible. You can't do long distance. I'm like, nothing is impossible for one, but two, they are possible because me and my wife done did it forever. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to me, it's the norm for me, but for others, it's like, you know, I, mean, I hear all these tragic stories. I, I kind of giggle like behind my, you know, <laughs> under my breath. But. That's awesome. So you guys have, um, so you, you met in junior college and mm -hmm. so you, Aaron, you went away to Boise State. And Karen, you obviously didn't go away. You stayed here. Mm -hmm. this, uh, the long distance. So you've been long distance because you played professional basketball overseas, right? So how long yeah. has that, how long have you been playing overseas? Uh, for six, uh, 16 years or seasons or whatever, however you want to call it, uh, since 2004. Okay. And wow. yeah, it's, uh, I think I think the transition for me going overseas and remaining in the relationship wasn't as hard because uh, was meeting in junior college and me going to Boise. So I mean, I still was away. It's just I was, I was uh, a lot further away. So when we say we talk about how the coronavirus, how it has impacted lives and it's changed some things, it's really changed some things for you guys because <laughs> now you're obviously home. And so, is it fair to say this is the most amount of time that you spent together? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yes. So the thing. So the thing. The funny thing is, yeah, this is the most time we spent together. But uh, the funniest thing was my first. It was like my first couple of days home, maybe four or five days, seven days, maybe max. Uh, and oh, wait, wait, wait. In the me, uh, AJ, uh, our son. Uh, who's six in kindergarten um, was still he wasn't homeschooling yet oh, yeah. so he was still going to school this is like Aaron got home maybe a yeah. week or two before we two weeks before okay we before we transitioned to homeschooling okay. yeah. so uh, yeah so basically AJ was still in school so I would, I would take him to school pick him up you know our normal routine our normal routine because normally I'm not here for that or if I am it's just for like a short amount of time and then I got to get ready to go back 
And then so uh, they so this year they count with the pandemics uh, kicking in. They, they canceled the season. So I'm like, all right, so I'm just home now, like permanent. You know what I mean? Like it's like a, a regular, like a like a regular person. So uh, we uh, we had a couple of conversations. Me and Kerry, we were just talking about us being home and around each other a whole lot more, and just we're just talking about the whole situation in general. So I had seen a meme on uh, Instagram with Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant was like sitting back on the couch and he was, it was, it was like him looking down as if he was looking at his family, but we know he don't have a family, but he was looking down as if he had a family. He was like, so this is, he was like, so what do y'all normally do around this time? <laughs> but it was so, it was so funny because it was like, I, now I'm starting to sit at home and I'm starting to get bored. The gyms are shutting down. I'm literally like not sitting back like this, but I'm just sitting back looking at Karen AJ. So I'm like, what do y'all normally do? <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, AJ and I have a routine. You know, we, we're set. We, we got a schedule. We got a routine that we're doing. And here he is coming home, of course. And he's like, where do I kind of fit in? Like, what, <laughs> what, is, what is going on? And, you know, AJ and I are just kind of doing circles around it. Like, okay, come on. Come on, you see us. This is the routine. <laughs> Yo, I came in messing up everything. Yes, yeah, schedule was <laughs> up. Hold on, we can't, we can't cuss on here, right? Oh, we no. Can. I would prefer that you wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. I was just gonna say. Yeah. It it wasn't gonna be. I was just gonna say. I came in messing up. I've been been messing messing up everything. I was just like, oh. And then I found out. I didn't even know there was a such thing. Okay. Here, y'all about to lose it now. I know what he's about to say. So you gonna lose it? I I was going. I don't know. I was walking out the living room and uh, coming into the kitchen. (laughs) Carol, like, baby, grab a uh, grab a kitchen towel or something. I was like, what? Like I never even knew there was a such thing as a kitchen towel. <laughs> and she was like, so she explained to me, yo, so she explained, <laughs> she explained to me what a kitchen towel was. I'm like, okay, okay, I, that kind of makes sense. My mama had that when I was young, but I didn't do too much in the kitchen. So my thing, my next thing was, where is the kitchen towel at? Like, where do you store that at? So she told me, I'm like, ah, okay, so. By this time, like time I went on, I had told my friends, we all was laughing about the Kevin Durant thing, the story I just told y'all. So now I told them, I said, bro, guess what? I found out something you that. It's a such thing as kitchen towels. And I found out where they look. <laughs> Yo, they, they was crying laughing. And they like, bro, you go to that. I was like, yeah, I know. Kitchen towel, y'all. Revelations. Revelations of COVID-19. That's heck of funny. I just had a vision of Aaron walking around the house. Come, see. What's this room do? <laughs> that, is, that, that, is that big old house, y'all like, oh, well, what is this for? Who, who lives in here? That, yo, this is the downstairs bathroom, babe. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, nah, look, look, when she said grab a kitchen towel, I was going to go back into the, the living room area, you know, we got the little out there where the I'm towels like, were. I'm thinking like a face towel, like one of our shower face towels or a big towel. She's talking about a kitchen towel. He was like, like, why do what? we have these? I said, Kitchen towels for the kitchen, like. But now, now that she mentioned that to me, I paid attention to it. It makes sense. But y'all come get him. That's funny. That is so funny. So I want to take it back to the beginning um, when Aaron and when Aaron met Kara. So you said you met in junior college. Yeah. So tell us the story who pursued who how did you know it was she was the one how did you know he was the one <laughs> what was you it you want to hear my side of the story you want to hear Kara's side okay right, look I, we want your side her side and we'll figure out what the truth is the truth no okay. his side the truth and lies the truth. right here with the brother with the black hat <laughs> That's where the truth lies. But go ahead, we're gonna, we're gonna let ladies go for it. Ladies speak first. Go so <laughs> we met, my friend was dating his roommate. And, um, you know, girls, we travel in packs. And so um, she wanted to go see her boo. And we were out hanging out that Friday night. And um, she said, Why don't you come with me? I'm like, Okay, you know, we're we not doing anything. So yeah, I'm gonna roll with you. So we go over to their place. And it's a bunch of guys just hanging out. And Aaron was there um, also. And he was talking with one of his female friends. Now, immediately when I walked in, I was like, oh, who's this? Like, he's cute. But this is me. I'm, I'm in college. I'm not trying to settle down or anything. I'm just having fun. I'm not looking for anything at all. Um, and then I thought he was cute. But the minute I saw him kind of 
talking with a girl and stuff. I was like, okay, he's taken. I'm not, and it just really, truly was just hanging out. Then um, I asked my friend who had brought me over there. I said, hey, find out if that guy is single. Like, what's his name? Who is that? You know? And so, <laughs> and so the minute she's texting her, uh, her guy, JT at the time, um, she, he, JT is texting her about me. So they were texting each other because we were at the same time, like they were both, we were in the car and at the same time, it's like, oh my gosh, they both asking about each other. Yeah. And so all of that, that, that was the first time. Yeah, that all, met. all of that is true. So that's, you don't got to figure out all that is true. <laughs> but it's funny because like she said, I was talking to my uh, friend, but it's crazy that, that I was even talking to a girl or whatever, you know what I mean? Because right. literally she was like, oh, she thought that that was my girlfriend. It wasn't, it was just like a friend, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I had first met when I first moved to Sacramento. But anyway, so as soon as I seen her, uh, when we walked like in, in passing, like when we first met, I was like, dang, she cute. So crazy thing if we end up we end up talking about the same thing we're thinking the same exact thing but i'm talking to my friends so i couldn't really go entertain and you know what i mean so when they were leaving everybody was leaving i, I told jt and then i guess by this time she's telling her friend uh nikki so they're literally texting each other at the same time she's like i was literally texting you and jt literally asking her like who was this like who was caring like was she single and all that so but we didn't know any at that point we didn't know like we just knew each other's name yeah you know and then in the long run we figured out both of us he was i didn't know at the time that he was going to leave to boise oh yeah i had signed already and go, uh, um i was planning on going to long beach state so <laughs> but i but i ended up staying back uh because my parents ran game on me talking about uh it would it would be better financially if i stayed home because they have direct flights to boise i was like oh that's true yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> so I, knew, so I, mean, I knew they, they, use, they use him to make you to keep you at home. Yes, but cousin, that's yeah, that's that that's half the truth. But she really just stayed because she met a real one. That was really it. <laughs> that was the that was the real truth. But I didn't I didn't like I didn't investigate it. That's the real truth. There's no him, her, and then in between the truth, it ain't none of that. So go ahead, carry on. Come on, so, so when you met him, um, you okay? So Aaron, you had already. This, well, you were already planning on going to Boise. You had already signed or whatever. So then, yeah. but you guys decided, well, let's just see if we're compatible, if we get along or whatever. So, well, yeah, we so, oh, go ahead. Go. So, originally, like me coming, leaving, I'm from, like I said earlier in the uh, interview, I'm from Fresno, not to y'all, y'all know, but the listeners, I'm from Fresno. So, when I was leaving, I was telling my mom that. Like when I go to SAC, I'm just going to school, you know, go grind and, and give me a scholarship so I can go on and continue my basketball career. Cause I knew this is what I want to do since I was young. And uh, she's like, okay, yeah, make sure, you know, you don't get a girlfriend, this and that. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm here and like, you know, I play, uh, did really well my first year. And my second year I ended up getting a lot of offers from uh, colleges. And so I go take a visit to Boise and I loved it. Like on my visit, uh, my, my recruiting trip. So I end up signing and then like, I don't know, shortly after I signed and committed to him, I met Kara. So, yeah, I was getting ready to go. I already had signed. I knew where I was going to be going. But uh, when I met Kara, we still had, like, a lot of months left. I had a lot of months left here in SAC before I took off. So we met, uh, exchanged numbers after that night we just told we just told you guys about, and we started talking or texting and talking. And then we just started hanging out a little bit. Then it just went to, like, all the time. <laughs> then it went to, like, me asking her to be my girl because at first I wasn't trying to have no girl and like, you know what I mean? She had her thing going. So we, we talked for, I think it was four or five like months. Like four or five months. Four or five months before we actually, okay. well, before I actually asked her out like to officially be my girl and just one thing led to another from there. We were just like always around each other and like the vibe was right. I always tell her the story. It's like, and I tell my friends this too because one of my boys, he's single and he always asked me like, Bro, how did you know Kara was the one? And I tell him, I was like, just to be all the way real, like, I play hoop. So, you know, I interacted and dealt with a lot of different females. And it's like, I never had, like, feelings or anything like that towards them, like how I had with Kara, just, like, off the bat. Like, after, we, after I got to know her a little bit more and spending a lot of time with her. And it was like, after that, it was like, she, I, you just know. So, 
That was how that happened. You know, tell the truth, boy. What happened was. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. You had, you, you had them hanger ons and always showing you love, them little groupies. And then Carol was like, mm, please, I'm not trying to study you. And she nodded her head, y'all. Yeah, it was. It was. I was like, this is, I was like, you know what? You fine and everything, but I see how, and I have been to the basketball games, and I'm like, look at these silly females over here acting like this. My stuff is just as good, if not better. <laughs> uh, and I'm gearing to go to Long Beach, so y'all could go ahead and do whatever. Right. Y'all don't believe in Long Beach. <laughs> it was true. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be telling y'all grandkids the Long Beach story. <laughs> okay, so, so I hear a lot of lessons in there, and so it sounds like if we were to like talk about a farm, a lot of times what you want to do is you want to prepare the soil, you got to plant the seeds. It takes a while to actually get that harvest, and yeah. it sounds to me like so the ground was fertile, so to speak, and you guys were kind of you know. Uh, plowing the field. I'm using all these bad analogies. You're like, oh man, yeah, I was like, this is not sex one. <laughs> we can <laughs> <all that analogy. laughs> What you were doing was preparing, right? Preparing for down the road. Yeah. And, and um, the question I have is, so it's almost like immediately early in the relationship, there was adversity where you two had to split up. Basically, you said you stayed in Sacramento, Karen, and Aaron, you yeah. left. So mm -hmm. how did that work out? What was the transition like when you went away to college and you're trying to maintain a long distance relationship? Uh, I mean, for me, for me personally, I mean, it was tough just because I had got used to spending so much time with her. Like I said, from the time that we exchanged numbers and start texting and everything escalated quick. Like we were spending like a lot of time together. Uh, it was tough as far as that, like me not being able to spend time, uh, with her like every day, like we had been doing. And this was my first time away from home, like out of state, like I've, been playing ball like travel ball here and there but i'd be gone for like a weekend like for a tournament then come back mm -hmm. and then uh when i was in sack every day you know we was together but uh or every other day and uh yeah so that was an adjustment but we didn't i mean we made it work like i said anything is possible like you want to make something work you can make it work it's just and this is before facetime and, and before all the, that uh, this, this was like social, heavy social media this stuff. is my space days yeah, there's a bunch of emails <laughs> And anybody and know me, I hate emails. Like, <laughs> it was a bunch of emails and like a lot of text messages. And like we had phones and stuff, but it wasn't like nowhere near what it is now. And all that. I think what they had back then, it was before Skype. It was AOL. Yeah, AOL. Yeah, had Lime, LimeWire. They had like the dial up <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it was, it was way back. That's crazy. I was only in 04, though. 2002, yeah. Uh, yeah. 2003 and 04. Yeah. Time flies. Time flies. So. You had mentioned that when you talk to your friends and, you know, everybody talks about how a lot of people, I'll say everyone, but a lot of people talk about how it's so hard to have a long distance relationship. How, what was it about your upbringing or the lessons that you got? What, what do you think made you both strong enough to endure what really put challenges on other relationships? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I think for, for me, it was it had gotten to a point in our relationship, not um, besides being day to day, but just with him being gone, I realized like, I don't ever want to be without him. Like, you know, I just, even, I, I don't know, I just realized that early on before us really going through like trials and tribulations, it's like when he left for Boise, it left something in me that was like, I don't, I don't want him just as a friend. I want him as a partner and I don't like not being around him. And so it just kind of was like, let me, in my mind, I just thought, you know what, let me, let us just get through this. And I know like, if we get through these couple of years, like it's going to be okay, but it was hard. It definitely, I think it was hard. It was harder, I think for me than it was for Aaron because I'm staying in Sacramento, you see his friends, you see, you know, the normal people that you guys and the person that's missing is him. And so it was really hard um, with him being gone, but I just knew at the end of it, we would come out stronger than we were when we started. Yeah. What about you? And for me, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, like, like kind of like what she said early on, I knew, 
I knew like I'm a I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I'm a hard like I'm dedicated. Once I decide something I, I want, I'm gonna go after it. And so uh, like like I was attached to it like early on. Like I said, I haven't been attached or had these kind of feelings for anybody. So uh, I was just for me, I was just like like that's gonna be my girl, and I'm gonna like I don't care about the stigma or whatever about over uh, long distance and all that. Like I'm gonna make it work. Like on my end at least. I mean I can do. You know, I mean, all you can do is take care of what you can take care of, and my efforts and 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 output is all I can take care of. So uh, I was just like, I'm gonna give it my all, and, and like, if it's meant to be, it's gonna be in the end. And she sounded like she had the same uh, same uh, thought process as me. Well, so was there anything like, was there a pivotal moment where, so transitioning into from okay, that's gonna be my girl, we gonna make it work, and that's my boo. I, you know, I don't want to be without him, but you know, we say that in relationships, you're in that euphoric state. So yeah. was there anything that was pivotal that made you say, this is forever. This is my forever guy. This is my forever girl. Was there anything that, you know, was it, or was it just the, the feelings just, they just continued on? Was there an aha moment? Was there a, oh yeah, he down, he the one. Was there, what was that? For me, uh, for me, I always had, like, when I was young, I knew I wanted to be married. I didn't know when, but I was just like, whenever the time is right. But I had, like, a, you know, like a, a list or a standard in my mind that I had. I'd never read, written it out, but in my mind, I knew when I do get married, she had to meet these expectations. And it was funny because early, like, in us dating, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I was checking off certain boxes mentally, but I'm not telling her, of course. She's I mean, such an Aries. I like, oh, okay. She <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but anyway so and i told i end up telling her i end up telling her about this list uh or this years office, uh, later year, like, super, <laughs> like a long a long long ways away after that but anyway so yeah so i had this list or whatever of what when i was younger of what i wanted my wife to be or whatever so and so when I start, when I met her, and like I said, we spent so much time together, I started learning a lot of different things about her. And I'm like, okay, so she checked that box. Oh, okay, she checked that box, whatever. So basically, get to the last couple of checks. I don't even know exactly which one they are. I would have to go through it, you know what I mean? And sit down and give it some thought. But she she met everything that I, I was like, I wanted in a wife. So I'm like, oh, okay. I can I can see us doing something long term. So that was pretty much, that was pretty much like my thought process and everything on it. Um, for me, I had, it, it was a pivotal moment back in, uh, 2004 when my dad passed and Aaron was close with my dad and y'all know this, my dad wasn't really like little, you know, he used to call them little friends, you know, little, little friends here and there. He never was attached to anybody. Never was like, okay, that's cute. Hi and bye. But like he legitimately liked Aaron it was something about him that he just really he used to tell me all the time so what does he want to do and I said well you know he plays basketball he was like okay so what do you want to do afterwards like that kind of <laughs> like that kind of thing and so um he when he passed away in 2004 Aaron was overseas but um before he left I guess him and um Aaron had some final conversations and so we knew when when daddy was getting sick you know with when he was in hospice that, you know, things were probably going to end soon. And so he was able to have those last kind of conversations with uh, the family and which was really important. And so he had a last conversation with Aaron before he left overseas. And so when he had passed, Aaron was overseas. And this was your first year? First year, yeah. First year. He was in Finland. And anybody that you know basketball players in the beginning they don't make a whole bunch of money like people think and so um this is in the middle of a season and aaron was he flew home for less than 24 hours for his funeral flew home for less than 24 hours i think he had a game that night but he was like i don't and left it non-negotiable for his team he was like you can cut me i don't care i'm not going to not be there and that, at that point, I was like, this is the man that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Like, I just knew it. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gates is gonna cry too. She's okay. okay. <laughs> but that, but that legitimately was it. And um, my aunt Mary, who y'all know too, is as crazy as I'll get out. Love her to pieces. She pulled me aside at my dad's funeral. She's my dad's cousin, and said, "If you don't marry that boy, I will." <laughs> I was like, what? She's, this yeah. time she's in her 60s but right. i was yeah but I'm she said that and i said you know what i said yeah he's he's the one that one you know you you yeah. hope i think at that before we got to that stage like i had hoped that you know this was it but like that solidified like this is this is it for me there's not anybody that's gonna be able to top this and for me the crazy thing about that i didn't even know like her saying this right I, now to you guys, I didn't even know this. Like this is all new to me. But but for me, it was just like, like I said, like I never felt this way for a girl like in my life. So I'm like, whatever. Like I'm gonna be there for. Her. So I'm like, and like I said, we we wasn't engaged, we weren't married, none of that. We were just still boyfriend and girlfriend, making it work long distance. But uh, <laughs> so when I told my team, I was telling them just out of respect. You know what I mean? It's, it's girl, going anyway, respect. right? Oh, yes, Rana, you, you already know we Aries. I'm like, look, my, once my once like I was saying earlier, once your mind made up, you're gonna do what you make your mind up to do. So my mind was made up already, but I was being professional about it. And it was like my first year overseas. Like we was having like I was having a great season. So Yeah, and I, we weren't engaged, we weren't anything. Yeah, we was, yeah, we, we were, were still boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, we were still like way, way early on, but I already had made my mind up. But we had a game that night, so I was telling the coach, like, you know, what had happened. I was like, I'm going to go, and I, I'll be right back. So, literally, like, you know, I mean, y'all didn't travel overseas. So you know, it's expensive to buy a ticket. That's another thing, to too. Buy a, to I was up like, and buy a ticket like that, you know what, what I mean? Going back to, man, that was like, I was, but. It was a 24-hour trip. None of that, none of that, none of that crossed my mind. Like, the price, and then I wasn't, because, like, I really rock with Mr. Walker. Like, like that was my dude. He was, like, he was cool. Like, and then. Other females I've met, and I've never met like their dads. And, you know what I mean? Like we we really had a relationship. Like we'd go to the gym together. Y'all saw, yeah. We flew out to LA. He took me out there. I think my twenty second or twenty third birthday. We went to the Laker game. I got to see the last game of Kobe and Mike in the Staples Center. But not even not even the didn't invite guy. me. No, no, you didn't invite me. <laughs> <laughs> he, him and his him and his best friend, one of care uncles, they came out to visit me in college. So you just know, yeah, just seeing that he was just like, and he was the solid, and the he was just a solid he was just like a solid dude, like outside of the things like he helped me with, like just man to man, you know what I mean? He was solid. So I was like, yeah, I mean, if y'all want to cut me, y'all can do that. I respect it, but I already had a good season, like somebody else would have picked me up, you know, because I was just explaining what happened. And any man in his right mind, if you don't do that, then to me, you're not a man. So come yeah. on. That was That's that funny. was it for me. You guys are talking about your, your father. And for those of our, our listeners that, that are the avid listeners that have been rocking with us from day one, um, they've heard about your father multiple times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done interviews in the past and I've asked questions and had men cry. I've had, not on purpose, but it's just that it's happened. This is the first time that you, a guest has brought something up and it had us both choked up. Um, I, I, and I hope people can feel the through the, the, the podcast, the, by listening to it, what an incredible human being um, your father was. And so that's a yeah, testament yeah. to both of you. And here, I, I commend you for stepping up as a man. And if there's a lesson in there, it's like, you know, gentlemen, if you're single and, and you've got somebody in your arm, do right, do the right thing. Don't care about the money, don't care about this other stuff, do the right thing. And you know what, you'll be blessed. So. Mm -hmm. So let's let's pick it up. Yeah, let's pick let's up the lighten pace. it up. Man, I don't got my right. team. <laughs> you can make me do the other <laughs> crime. Right, Ronna, you, you asked the question. Ronna, you well, are I too tough to have all these tears in here. <laughs> you are too tough for that. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so, I'm, so now I'm curious. So now all this is going on. This is what you guys are babies. You know, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are babies in your relationship. And so then you matured. So then how long... Um, was Aaron playing professionally before you two decided to get married? I had been ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. I had been ready. Yeah. Sending, sending notes, sending little things. Um, and then I think it was, when was it in Dubai? 2016? 
No, no wait, we were married. 2006. I was like, yeah. what? I was like, wait. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah 2000, 2006. And um, Aaron, out the blue, was like, baby, tomorrow do you want to go, you know, just kind of look at rings? I was like, what? <laughs> what? <So> now? <laughs> I ain't never got ready so fast in my life. Wow. I was <laughs> She liked to everything. <laughs> So we just went and looked at rings. Now, I don't think that we actually got engaged until 2010. So it was so it was like some years after looking at rings, and I'm like, dude, yeah. like come on, you know. And um, wait, 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 wait. I, I gotta stop you there. And I know I don't normally do this, but something just clicked, bro. You crazy. You were looking for rings. Hold up. You were looking for rings in, in Dubai. Dubai. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, wait. No, in Dubai. I skipped. I skipped a whole lot. We looked at rings. This was him. Um, he had came home okay. from Dubai. From Dubai. Oh, so we looked at bro, dude, I was about to say, if, if I knew Dubai, then I'm what I place. know now. Ernie, I'm not spending. Uh, yeah, uh, we were looked in Dubai. We, yeah, it's okay <laughs> to go look. But, yeah, we went to we ship back to the States. Uh, <laughs> Why a whole different ball game, boy. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was yeah, like, no, it had, it had been, a, yeah, we didn't get engaged until 2010. Yep, it was 20, I remember so for you sure. You went looking at rings in 2006? Like seven. seven. It was seven. Seven. Uh, 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 See? Thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't care about your thumb down. Who are you? Hey, who are you to judge me? I don't care about your thumb. I'm gonna give you two thumbs down. How about that? Will you stop? <laughs> no, that is bad. <laughs> like three, waiting three years, and then we went on vacation to um, San Diego, and it was a belated birthday gift, and it was like in a shoebox, and he had proposed. So Aww. it was in the shoe box. And I know it was 2010 because my Lakers had won the championship. So I had to wait till the game was ended. Yeah, no, no. No, every no, no, no. Let me tell you how he proposed <laughs> real quick. He proposed. It was beautiful. He proposed um, in our room and got down on one knee. On the beach. We was on the beach. It was beautiful. It was clarified. It was nice, cousin. Yeah. And then... Um, as soon as we got back in, he was like, "Oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> let me turn. Let me turn it." And this Lakers wanted to see his Lakers. I was like, "Wait, what?" She and on the phone crying, crying, calling, calling people. Calling, I'm calling in the finish watching my Laker game. I'm he like, done turned the game <laughs> back on. But wait, wait. You said it was in a shoebox. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It I was, put it. So it was in the shoebox. It I was had, wrapped. Yeah, it was, I had it wrapped up. It was like in the little ring, Gazetta box or whatever, and I had the shoebox for like. Some uh, you know, like the plat. I mean, not the, the paper stuff that come in the shoebox. And I had mm -hmm. like the little bitty box in there, so she had to go inside that to get inside the little. I box. didn't know there was a ring in it. By yeah. this point, she's thinking it was shoes. Yeah, by this point, after three years of looking at a ring, was I didn't. It, think. Was it at least a Nike box? Yeah, it was a Nike. Box. It was a Nike. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm team. You know, I'm team Nike over here. Uh, but no, so Rona, so a little bit like that was a long time. Yeah, but for, for me. I wanted, like, I know that's like a big moment. So when I was like, when I did tell her about the ring, I'm like, if I'm gonna do it in a couple of years, I need to do it, like go get her size and everything now. Okay. But I know at that moment, after we sized her, she was thinking like, oh, oh, we're gonna get married in like the next month or two. That wasn't my purpose I going into the whole situation. No, did that, uh, no, did that. And so we, uh, yeah, so we went to go try, try it out and I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I picked the ring and everything, which is the one she got. And uh, did. just when we was going to look. I'm like, oh, I like that. That's nice. She's like, I like, you like that better? She's like, yeah. And the lady was like, I guess this is like some new style or something. I don't know. But anyways, so my whole purpose was doing it was to get the size. Like, I had a lot of guys who was about to get married and all that. And it was like, how did you get the ring size without letting them know? And I was like, and that's Trying to I put did. them up on game. Yeah, so I, I went and got the size of it and, you know, went to go look at, look at rings and see, like, what she liked and what I liked. And then get the size, but you don't got to do it right the next week or the next because she's or the she's, year in her mind she's thinking like okay I'm about to get engaged soon or a year or two you know what I mean <laughs> depend on depend on you don't let nobody pressure you you move at your own speed to the listeners this don't, is true. cousin giving me a thumbs down for <laughs> waiting three years out I don't care about that thumbs down move at your own speed don't move at nobody else's speed it'll work out better 
That's heck of funny. That is so funny. But yeah, that was my that was the reason that it took so long like that, Ronna. That no, so, I, I of course I know the story, but I just yeah. it's just so funny to me that um I didn't know that part though that it was three years. I might have had to do a karate chop. Come on, cousin. <laughs> You're well, always I, trying to fight that, 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 I, gave you, I said hi and gave you a hug, I'm going to get a karate chop. <laughs> I think that is beautiful. I love how, um, like you said, you guys have been able to, you've been able to do what a lot of couples have difficulty doing. And not only were you able to maintain a long distance relationship statewide, but you were overseas playing professional basketball. And Kara managed to, you know, you guys managed to still keep it together, keep it going. Um, that's that's commendable because you have people who travel. Someone is in a, for their job, they may travel and they can't seem to, you know, oh, it's too much or whatever. So that, I think yeah. that's awesome. That goes, that's a testament to, like you said, Aaron, when you put your mind to something, you know, and, and you all were committed to each other. You knew she was the one, you knew he was the one. and the only way to make it work is to work it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, I mean, <clears throat> thank you for that. But, uh, He's on butt, like, huh? I, I know I hear, I hear some of those stories too. Like people travel for work or whatever. And like you said, they have problems or maybe even end up, end up divorcing. But like I said earlier to me, like, if you know that you want that or whatever, you have to like work at it. Just like with your job. Like if you want to get paid well or get this, uh, this uh, new position or whatever, you got to work at it. You got to put time into it. It's the same thing with a relationship. And then just when you out of the state or out of the country away from your significant other, you got to communicate more. And now it's, now it's a whole lot easier for me because of the, uh, the, the technology, you know, with the camera, mm -hmm. I see, I get to see AJ every day. I mean, that's a tough part. Like when he asks uh, certain questions, but the fact that I get to see him every day and talk to him every day, that's like a little bit uh, easier for me, but it's still not easy being away, but, you know, you got to sacrifice, like you got to sacrifice, you got to communicate. And, and I think too, <clears throat> not having, imagining not having that person or that partner with you is when you have that mindset of like, it's non-negotiable. I'm not going to be without this person. You're going to make it work. Yes. When he's overseas and it's a 17 hour time difference. Do I want to go to bed at eight o'clock? Yeah. But he's not getting up or he's not out of practice till 10 o'clock our time. So I'm going to stay up and we're going to have a, an interrupted conversation. So that kind of stuff, Aaron's tired Same sometimes here. when we wake mm -hmm. up yeah. and it's past midnight, but he's staying up so we can, you know, talk and have family time. And it, it's an adjustment, but when you make it work and make it a priority, it's going to work out. Yeah. It's, it's almost like one of those things where, like, if you work in and you got like, oh, I got to get this in because I got to do do and be there for my kid. Like, I'm saying if you're stateside, uh, a family member, a family that's a stateside, oh, I got to do this for my job. I'm real busy with my job, but you still got to make time to, to be there with your kids and make sure they're getting mm -hmm. the love and, and treatment that they need. It's the same thing when I'm overseas. It's like, I got practice. I might have a game the next day. So I think, like, when they waking up in the morning, it's like around – like midnight my time so some some nights i'll be like baby like i got a game in the morning i'm tired so i send him a text before i go to sleep and i go sleep 10 communicating or, or whatever that's the communication part but yep. nine and a half times out of ten i'll be up around midnight yeah. so you know we just prop the phone up with uh aj me and aj talk while he eating his breakfast care being in the back getting ready it's a whole it's we a, a whole, we, we it's a system yeah, that we, we got a whole we system. figured yeah. out and then after that he finished i have him take the phone in the care talk with him for a hot second and then I crash, and then I wake up the next day. It's afternoon for them, so and we get time in that way as well. So we figured then, it out. Yeah, we got trial and error. Trial and error. Yeah, we got a whole, <laughs> we got a whole system. So, like I said, for me, it's, I mean, it's hard like being away, but it's not hard to like some of the stories I've heard. Like, oh yeah, like we got a divorce or thing. Like it's not hard like that to me because me this, is, this is what I want. You know what I mean? So. Uh, so let's put it in perspective. You know, some people are hearing right now, I was overseas. I could do that. I, you know, it's, it's not that hard. But I, I really want to paint the picture. From the time that you went overseas, how many countries have you played in, Aaron? Damn. <laughs> maybe, damn, 16, 8, maybe 5 to 10. I'm just going between there. I can name them, but yeah. 
I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know off the back of like the I back could of my head. Six by the time I head, you know. It, yeah, so probably like yeah, probably like eight to ten, maybe. Yeah. So I was, thinking, but so you had to make this adjustment every single time, different time zones, different parts yeah. of the yeah. world. So when you're looking at a relationship and you talk about the trials and tribulations and the sacrifices that need to be met, I think it's crucial for our listeners to understand that it's you got to pay the price, whatever that price may be. Mm -hmm. pay the price because you're going to pay it some way. Some of your friends have paid the price in the form of divorce and the price that you chose to pay was a little bit of discomfort when it comes to your sleep, your time mm -hmm. schedule, circadian rhythm. Um, you know, but it, you've said it multiple times mm -hmm. that what you've decided to invest in is communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, key. Little, that's key in anything. It, it really Not is. Not just no relationship. That's key in like that's key in everything, man. Like communication and world, trust like, and trust. trust too. Yeah, that's that's key. That's key in everything. Not just in no professional sports and relationship. It's everything. <laughs> that's key. Um, communication, especially with you all, with the traveling and with the separation, like you said, the the two top communication and the trust. Those are must haves. I mean, we must have it also. But he's tangible to me. I can touch him. I could, you know, whatever. If I'm upset or what, what have you, I can go oh, upstairs boy. or go in. Um, what do you say? <laughs> or elbow like you do me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you touch me. But what I'm saying is that you know, it's not. He can hear the inflection in my voice, and not over computer or over phone or what have you. And I could say, well, if I say no, nothing, and he's like, no, it's something. You know, you all do that, and you you could either hang up the phone or you could, and the other person is left in the balance. No. Nah. My point is that no. What I'm saying is that there are people oh, that okay. there are people that do that. So you yeah, that's not good. That's bad communication. You go that route. That's very yeah. bad communication. Yeah, that's bad communication. So with you all, you have to your communication. It can't just be okay. It has to be phenomenal. It has to be stellar. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That you have to work at. You can't mm -hmm. just be like Lovey and I. We could just have okay communication together today. You know, <laughs> you know, we could go through whatever. But when you're apart from each other, Kara, you like you said, you have your rhythm with you and AJ. And then Aaron, you have your rhythm with you and your team. So you have these different, what do you call them? Algorithms, whatever. Come on, girl, with the big words. <laughs> I'm gonna graduate. Okay. Okay. I, I like that. I'm gonna graduate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have your different algorithms, and so, but you have to, they always have to come and they have to align together. Yeah. Because you could be out of sync over here, but you must be in sync over here. You know, Kara can't let what's going on with AJ interrupt or interfere with her and Aaron because mm -hmm. I like how you said that too Aaron how you have your time with AJ alone separate from Kara and Kara's getting dressed or doing whatever and then okay take the phone to mom and then you guys do your it's almost the equivalent of a goodbye kiss okay bye and I gotta go so then later on tonight afterwards then you guys uninterrupted time like you said Kara yeah. you know have your uninterrupted time so you're still being able to stay connected you know that's so key that's very very important it can't just be me mediocre you know it cannot yeah. just be mediocre it has to be tip top because when you're going through it and you're alone there's so many other things on the outside that could interfere with while you're separated you know Aaron, yeah. you can be off doing whatever care you can be off doing whatever but you make it you make sure that mm -mm, the Haynes name is going to stay intact, you know. Yeah. I always say that. Everybody yeah. going to have a case of last name that live in this house. We all going to be cases, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We uh, be staying yeah. together. We working it out. And I think that's very key. And for you guys are, for such a young couple, it's like you, you got that early. Because there's so mm -hmm. many people. You, you learn that wisdom, you know. Aaron, mm -hmm. you said for yourself, you saw, you had what you wanted. And you're, you know, you had your list, like we do our list in our heads. We don't tell everybody about but you had a list, <laughs> check, check, check. <laughs> and Kara, you had a great example. We, like uh, Lovey was saying, we referenced your parents um, mm -hmm. a lot, especially early on in our podcast. I remember yeah. when I first met you guys and um, it was, we came, came over to the house, we picked up Caleb and mm -hmm. I first met you 
I met you, your dad, Patches, and uh, <laughs> uh, in, and you know, you were, um, anyway, you were, uh, there was the upstairs and I was like, oh, they're so cute, you know. Um, <laughs> you can look over the balcony and look down. Um, and, but the energy in the house, I felt the energy in the house. And I was like, I looked at your mom and your dad and I never told him this, not until much later, but I was like, that's how we gonna be. I just knew we had just started dating really like a month or so. We were only like a month in, but I knew I was like, that's how we gonna be. And that's how we've been, you know? Yeah. 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 And all of our uh, listeners know that was the model for us. That, that was uh-huh. the blueprint. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't want it to sound like, oh, they got it dialed up. They, they don't have any issues. They got it. Just, what, what has been, he was shaking his head like beaker no no no, no 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 it's good that you said well, saying what you're about to say because i was going to piggyback on something that Rana said earlier about like bad communication like you can be mad or like she, right there she could mm-hmm. tell you like oh nothing but you know that it's really something mm-hmm. and, and and like she was saying some people will just hang up and then like that'll fester and grow but i was going to piggyback on that and just say like basically yeah, you can't have that like even even when i'm here like and i was going to talk about like everything is not perfect even though we've right. been making it this long time we've had a lot of ups and downs but <laughs> at the end of the day our good outweigh our bad and we know where we want to be so all that all the bad that that's just gonna come and go you know what i mean but the long i mean the we got a, a like the good outweigh the bad by like double or triple you know what i mean so but go ahead ask your question I, I, yeah I <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I never I never said what I wanted to say about when Rana had said that. But go ahead. What is the greatest challenge that you two face in your marriage? I mean, do you I, I'm curious if it's you both see the same obstacle as the greatest obstacle, or were there separate things question. that you saw differently that you both saw as obstacles, but nonetheless they were obstacles. The biggest one. And what Trust. is the coming? <laughs> you said stress? Trust. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trust. So Aaron is, uh, as he mentioned, he's an athlete. So when you're an athlete, you attract a certain crowd. Mm-hmm. And with that certain crowd, just because I have respect and morals and values for other people in their relationships and whatnot, other people don't feel the same way. They don't care. And so sometimes, and often people see out of sight out of mind and that's how they act we've had a lot of friends and we know of people you know that are either married and they either have open marriages or they um have gotten divorced because of whether it's groupies or just some kind of trust some kind of trust that has been broken and for me that has been um like without giving it all up in the business but it trust has been early i mean growing up together you you grow you have pains you know what is it peaks peaks and peaks belly and yeah or as betty wright said no pain no gain so <laughs> i just told her about betty wright like oh hush we go ahead. that's another conversation well, moving on, moving on. <laughs> but that when that was broken it took years to get back you know what i mean and and for me anyway that was like the biggest obstacle and it's still you know just as a person you know you have your own insecurities and things and so it's like it's aaron is very he's very popular he's very charming he's very likable and so i think a a lot of times people i know i have a charming husband my cousin both of y'all are charming so it's people sometimes you talking about him (laughs) (laughs) about both of y'all so sometimes people (laughs) mistake that charming for some kind of and it's like no they're just charming you know and so just having that trust is vital for you know having a successful i think relationship what were you gonna say no, i agree uh, I'm like, you, <laughs> <laughs> you better agree you better agree this is a test no i agree i, I agree with that 100 percent. you gotta have trust and uh belief, faith, and all that, that, you know, your mate or whatever's going to be doing the right thing. And uh, like she said, early on, like, you know, we had our uh, bumps and bumps in the road or whatever, but I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's still then 
I mean, I know it affected her a certain way, but even if she was like, oh, I'm done, I want, I'm leaving or whatever, like, I still know what I want, even though I messed up. Like, I'm human, like everybody else is human. I still wouldn't have let her go. I was gonna, I would have just kept doing what I, I just kept fighting for it, put it that way. I wouldn't just like take her just walking away, you know what I mean? Like, because of a mistake I made, like we all make mistakes, you know what I mean? But uh, I think like mistakes are okay. As long as you learn from it and you and you build it and yes. you build on and move on from it, but if you keep if you keep repeating the same action, then that's not a mistake. That's yeah. a mistake. I was gonna say that's a lifestyle. If you keep doing the same thing, and right? Yes, you yeah. learn from it. You it happened. Okay, we learn from it. How do we make sure it doesn't happen again? But if yeah. you keep on, oh, I made a mistake. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Karen's favorite words: No, boo boo. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know I say mm -mm, no, no. no we don't so, like what, so what do you guys do to uh, now that you're home? You know, and I, I know we're in the we're in the COVID, or you really probably can't do a whole lot. I don't know. Some people just do whatever. But what is it that you do to stay connected? What is it that you do to, you know? Just be like, oh, let's let's do it again. Let's whatever. You other know. other P than yeah, PG, PG, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was gonna say, say that a line, but and I was gonna say, other than teaching Aaron what things are called in the house. <laughs> Well, you know what? Hey, that's it's, a part of communication, though. It is. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that. That's see, <laughs> he uh, enjoys that. I'm an Aries man. I like. I'm real plain and laid back. I like the simple things. Like I like to have a good time. I like the simple thing. Like I get a kick out of that. Like I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that. I can see Aaron. <laughs> I can see Aaron walking through the house. house. <laughs> but I can see walking through the house. Like we got a kitchen towel. Hey, babe, do we have a garage towel? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do we got a Do we got a, a towel for the backyard? Like this is it's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. No, but I think, so pre-COVID, we used to go on date nights every Friday. Every Friday or Saturday, we would do a date night, whether, it, you know, it's at a bowling alley or um, go to a movie, go to dinner. Like, we would just always do, make an effort Friday, Saturday, Friday or Saturday. That's our night together. Um, needless to say, that ain't been happening. <laughs> so we have, I mean, We'll watch our shows now. I, I feel like, especially with everything going on in like homeschool and this and that, we've been tired a lot more, of course. But uh, like just once our son goes to sleep, you know, and he's a busy six-year-old, we are able to, what do, we, what do we do? We watch our shows, watch movies, um, That's it. Communicate. communicate, yeah. We, talk a we talked the other day about playing Connect Four, but I mean, we were so tired. We were like, look, uh, <laughs> yo, that game ain't going nowhere. <laughs> let me chime in on this. So the homeschooling thing, I told Morgan, I got friend, other friends that uh, that's teachers I know, excuse me, some teachers that's in Korea. Man, they need a pay raise. It's so hard homeschooling, and then you you trying to keep you trying to keep up your your daily activities and whatever you do. You know what I mean? Like me, me like me investing or doing whatever I'm doing, and then working my work, out my workouts for who? Like, because I mean I can't go to the gym and actually like do nothing with the basketball, but like me in the weight room, you know, doing weights and, and the peloton. God, it's tiring. And then like and then you know AJ he a six year any six year old they got energy like. It's like no, no, no. Soon as I come down, Daddy, let's play high go seat. Let's like let he building tents. I'm I'm high and I'm sleeping. He's like, Daddy, see if you can fit in a tent. I get in that tent. I'm laying down like shit. I'm trying to take me a little nap right now. <laughs> but it, it but it's the whole COVID has completely changed our day to day activities. Completely. You know, we've added it's been a lot of add ons, you know. It's y'all lucky, y'all got older kids. You know, when it's, <laughs> this is, yeah, you got older kids and it's like, okay, you do your homework or you, you know, you're responsible for your own things. Whereas at six, they are relying on you. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've, and especially with me now going back to work, it's like, I got hired the week before the state mandate. So it's, it's been a whole it's it's been a lot, you know. We've we've had to tag team the uh, homeschool situation, but unfortunately, we do miss date nights. 
but it just is one of those things where it's like we love each other we know we love each other we try and uh have our alone time you know once he's gone to bed but the fact is is other things have shifted into higher priorities yeah yeah. So is yeah. this like a little sneak look, a sneak peek, I should say, of what life is going to be like after basketball? Because you'll be home more. So yeah. 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 Like, oh, for sure. Time. Because <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing, the good thing about it is, like, I'm cool with it. Like you said, this is early, earlier on. You said like this is mostly been around each other, and like I'm fine with it. Like, so I'm I'm looking at like once I retire, I'm still gonna go upstairs and work out. You know what I mean? But I won't have to homeschool AJ, of course. But I'd be doing whatever I'm doing. You know what I mean? but uh it yeah, definitely like, it I, I didn't even think about that like this oh, is I, a glimpse I, yeah i thought about it i thought about it and like i'm i'm fine with it like cause at the end of the day now sure i got my family you know we didn't have aj at first we were talking about the long distance thing we got aj now so it's like shit, i ain't hey, i'm here i'm in the trenches for the forever <laughs> until guys until guys say otherwise <laughs> i was gonna say it's funny I, I know that you know your favorite player was kobe and that you're, uh, you've been a Lakers fan as long as, that was the only knock on you that I can remember when I first met. <laughs> yeah, you want to be like the Queens, I mean the Kings? And, you know, I, I was going to say, I'm not, I'm, I'm anything but the Lakers, but I probably lost some viewers just on that statement alone. <laughs> but, no, but I, I will say this, one thing that's really, it just dawned on me right now is that Kobe was really known for, and is known, for his Mamba mentality. Mm. And I would like to say that you two have had that Mamba mentality when it's come to your relationship. Yep. Mm. That work ethic, that drive, that Kobe wasn't always on top. He wasn't always the flavor of the month. He made mistakes and he owned up to them and then he got better. He never repeated them. The one thing I can say about him is that if you saw him make a mistake once or twice, you better catch it on film because you'll never see it again. And that's very true of what should be true of most relationships, but I could say it's very true of yours that you two have that mama mentality when it comes to marriage. I might even put like a little subtitle in there on um, the mama mentality marriage, you know. Um, yeah, I like that. Mama mentality, yeah. So I want to thank both of you for making time to actually come on the podcast, but we like to close out every single one of our podcasts with. An I can can. It's a um, we have an I can can, which is basically for couples. It's an affirmation that we use for each individual on our podcast. What I was doing it, and you were talking. Oh, okay. And so <laughs> she's how she's. See, if you guys can see this, you put it up in my face. Anyways, we're gonna pull. We're gonna pull one for the fellas and one for the ladies, and this is what you're gonna focus on for the week. Okay. No, Ernie, you pull mine. I don't want her. That's to pull what I'm doing. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm telling what hell she's gonna do. I I I want I want to give this to Aaron. I can he does watch, that anyway. I can wash the dishes. So Aaron, before There's you say anything, I was about to say before you say anything, the dishes are those things you eat off that in the eat kitchen. Eat off of. They're in cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all tripping, man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ernie, is that is that the one you pulled, Ernie, or no? That's what I, I, I did. I pulled this. She pulled oh, it, but that's for that's for Karen. Karen, oh, yeah, like yeah. I ain't watching this. That's why I said we don't want another pull in here. I do on, anyway. Ernie. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Aaron's is I can hold my partner's hand in public. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I do that anyways. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Hey, you know? Oh no. Anyway, we about to end. All right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> don't get them started. But, Hey, I appreciate you two very much. And um, so how do they, so Aaron, with you playing ball overseas, how do they keep up with you? Are there some handles you have on social media that um, you would like people to follow so they can stay up on, you know, your career and what you're doing? Oh, yeah. My, uh, my IG is uh, Aaron Haynes 32 or Aaron underscore Haynes 32. And my Snapchat is Haynes my way 32 or is it just Haynes my way? <laughs> Yeah, just hit me up. Just hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Aaron Haynes thirty two, basically, or Aaron underscore Haynes thirty two. Aaron underscore Haynes thirty two. A Y N E S. And I'm not just saying this because I know them extremely well, but uh, if you look overseas, particularly over in the Korean basketball league, I was getting ready to say that. Um, I, and I'm not just saying this. Aaron is that equivalent of the Kobe or the LeBron over in the KBL 
And it's not just my word for it. It's not my word. It's the championships and the league MVPs um, that you've stacked up as a result of doing that. And didn't he um, make the most points or something yep. like that? Number one scorer. American okay. talk your talk, runner. I agree with you now. You just can't pull my you just can't pull my tag. <laughs> talk your talk. Talk it. <laughs> Say, so say what it is, because I was like, oh, wait, we didn't say that. So what is yeah, it? Yeah, all-time big score uh, for Americans to ever play in Korea, number one. I uh, got three or four uh, championships. We would have won this year had COVID not took over, but uh, we finished first and, yeah, I've broken a lot of records, but I humbly say – MVPs? Huh? MVP, was it two or three? Three. Three. Look, she know. Uh, that's oh, right. No, uh, oh, oh, see, we about to end. That's another thing I love about her, though. Just to, before we go off, I love that she knows sports. <laughs> like the night, the night, one of the nights we hung out, we had first, first really met and like hung out. I won him with my she, Dallas Cowboy she knowledge. Didn't know, she didn't even know that I was paying attention to her. Like we was talking, <laughs> like small talk, but it was other people in the room, and like she was talking about sports and all this, and I'm looking, but they don't know what I'm looking. I'm looking like, damn, she know like she knew <laughs> stuff about football, like. The my, average girl, the average girl don't know. I, I'm sure of it. I'm right. like, hmm. So she had my attention at that. And we wasn't even like talking like, I hadn't even got her number yet, I don't think, by then. That's like, props to my dad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, he could talk some smack about them stupid cowboys. Oh, see, <laughs> okay. All right. Did y'all say we, we end in some? <laughs> don't don't get started on my cowboy. cowboy. <laughs> we love you. We thank you for being on the podcast. Um, stick around. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But uh, like we always say, you know, um, until we see each other again, be blessed. Bye-bye. Love y'all too. Love you. Thank you.